Okay, welcome back. And have you ever had a poor painting that you're like, ooh, it's good. I just wish there was something more. Well, the more part is called embellishment. So far up to this video, I've been doing embellishments by hand painting them. I come from a traditional acrylic painter background. And so here's a, for instance, this is a horse I painted on top of a Dutch boar. Dutch pour, let it dry, paint of the horse. And it's great, it's just the reason I got into pour painting is because it's fast. I mean, not really fast, but it, it gives me access to creating art in a much quicker setting. And you can spend 30 minutes and it hopefully get a magical painting. And so it's fantastic. I get my creative fix quick. So I was like, what can I do to speed up the embellishment process if I just want to complete a painting or seek out my vision how I wanted, but not go through the hand painted time frame constraint. So I'll still do those hand painted embellishments when I have the time. And if you're just looking to have some fun and try something new, this is a tutorial about a very easy add on that I'm super excited about water slide paper. Have you guys heard of it? Because it's awesome. I started looking on Facebook groups and YouTube and stuff like that and people have been doing, you know, um, temporary tattoos, which is good. I just didn't know about the scale. And so from digging a little bit more, people use water slide paper and I was like, okay. And so this tutorial is digging into water slide paper. This is actually my first piece that I've created with water slide paper and I'm very excited about it and excited to show you about it. So let's get started. So this is the painting I'll be adding on to. I like it enough not to pour over it, but I felt like it needed a focal point or something to just spice it up. So enter water slide paper. So this is clear water slide decal paper. Used with inkjet printer instructions included, this is the A4 size, which is 8.3 by 11.7 inches. So what you'll need is a computer to print designs, inkjet printer, acrylic clear spray, scissors, large bowl, water, paper towels, surface to put decal on, which would be the painting. I just wanted to note here, if you don't have an inkjet printer, maybe you could take the paper to Kinko's or FedEx or your local library and use their printer and maybe they would put the paper in for you. Okay, so first step is to create and print your design. So I actually didn't design this myself. I bought these images I'll be using from an artist on Etsy. She sells digital watercolor illustrations and they're gorgeous. And I'll link her in the description box. Since I am not using this image to sell this piece of art, it's just for me at home, I just bought the personal license and asked her if I could credit her in my video, and she said yes, so that was very nice of her. And I highly recommend checking her stuff out or other artists on Etsy. It's just a good way to support other artists out there. And if you are planning to sell your paintings using other people's art or images off the internet, just make sure to buy their commercial license or ask if it's okay that you resell their stuff. So let's get to it. I printed these on my inkjet printer and I read the instructions. So 300 DPI setting for clear image results, print on the glossy side and set it to high quality print and make sure to select glossy photo paper. And then you have to let it dry for three to five minutes. So there's a cute little note at the bottom of the instructions that says you cannot print white with a printer. So if you want the white color to show through, leave that area clear in your design. And what I soon found out is that it's not just applying to like straight white. If you have lighter colors like this pretty soft pink and this pretty teal, those are mixed with white to make that color. So it's just going to be very translucent. So I went ahead and followed through um, with showing you that part of the process because then I had to course correct and actually buy the white water slide paper. So let's keep going. This is my clear glaze, so it's Krylon Triple Thick Crystal Clear Glaze. Any clear gloss spray will work for this next step, which is to seal the design with your gloss spray. So you take your images to a well-ventilated space and apply an even coat to each one, and you allow the spray to dry for one minute, and then you apply another coat, let that dry for a minute, then you apply a third coat, and you let that dry for about five minutes before the next step. 
And cutting out your design is the next step. So you use scissors or if you have a cutting machine, you cut around your design. And the instructions say to leave a border of at least an eighth of an inch, but I actually just went ahead and cut really close to the image. So step four is soak the decal. So you fill a bowl or a baking sheet with room temperature water, and you're going to submerge the cut decals in water for 30 to 60 seconds or until the paper backing can slide off easily. Then you're gonna remove it from the water. I recommend holding the decal down whenever you first put it in the water, because as you can see, it can curl like a lot. Or mine did because of um, the intricate shape of it, but it made this really weird hissing sound. It was like, Psst. so hold it down, it'll soften up, and then, like I said, 30 to 60 seconds. I went on the side of 60 seconds. So here's step five position the decal. This is where I find out the clear waterside paper issue. I was so confident in my choice because technically it didn't have straight white in the image. Well, just even my soft pastels meant they wouldn't show up. So I ordered white waters light paper. Now the clear could be used on white or a super light background painting, or if you just want to do a very dark decal, that might work. But I was determined to use these images with this painting. So I had to pivot to the white water slide paper. So here we go. Now that I have my white water slide paper, I redid all of the four steps. So I printed my design, I sealed my design, I cut out my design, and um, went to the soaking step of each of my designs. So here I am ready to apply it. So step five is place the decal with backing flush against your project in the desired position. I spritz a little water on there to um, plant it a bit better. And you gently hold the edge of the decal and while pulling the white backing from behind the decal. And it says you can use a wet finger to push out any excess water or you can use a paper towel to press against the decal to force the excess water out from behind the decal as well. So I learned that you gotta be really careful when you're removing the, uh, the back paper because your, your water slide paper can tear. And I've got a lot of intricate, jaggedy little shapes, so I had to learn to be really careful with it. And the nice thing is, is that you can reposition your decal after you pull out the backing. And thank goodness for that because it's very easy to get wrinkles. So I push from the center out to try to get those wrinkles out. So I'm gonna speed this up as I apply more of my decals. Things that I've learned during this process are that you have a little bit of time after taking off the backing to kind of readjust. You can't slide it very much more, but you can fix little fold over pockets or wrinkles or curled edges and kind of shift and move it into the position that you're gonna want it to be in. And you really need to remove the excess water and I squeegee it out with my fingers or with a damp paper towel. And here I wanted to show an up close that some of my intricate little detail spots f uh, folded back under. And so I just used a little wooden skewer or tweezers would work to uncurl it. So I lifted this whole thing up, uncurled it, then place it gently back down. And it is very important to be really gentle with this paper because it can scratch easily, it can tear easily, it is super thin. So just be really, really careful with it. And the idea is the same, that it's it's just like a temporary tattoo. You're gonna wanna you know, press it down and smooth out any of the wrinkles and um, get a really good seal on it so remove that excess water. So I've applied all of my decals and the last step is to allow them to dry naturally out of direct sunlight for three hours. And I just wanted to do an up close here and show how thin that paper is. I really thought there would be a lip, like a sticker, you know, like something really obvious. But you can even see the texture of the canvas showing back through. And even though I used white water slide paper, you can still see the pore painting from underneath and that means it's not completely opaque, um, which is still a very cool effect. So I did want to note something unusual that happened. I did see these lines show up after I applied the decal. These weren't there whenever I printed it, so I'm not sure if it has something to do with the paper itself or with my printer or the canvas. Um, I'm going to have to do some more research on that, but really it didn't bother me too much because I didn't uh, 
and no, you can't really tell too much from like two feet away. Up close you can, um, but if you're not looking for it, you can't see it. And again, this is just for me. I love this painting so much now that um, it won't bother me at all. So I wanted to do an extra step and actually add some depth to my decals, almost like they're, they're a little 3D and popping off of the canvas. So I'm just going to use acrylic paint. I picked the color Payne's Gray. Um, it's got a nice blue, darker effect to it. And I'm just applying it right along the edge of the decal. If you get it on the decal, it's fine. It won't actually stick to the decal. You can just wipe it off. So right along the edge in thin layers until you get the effect that you're going for. And here you can really tell the difference. The left has that uh, depth effect to it and the right doesn't yet. And I just wanted to add this shadow effect because my decal looked a little flat. It looked fine, you know, and it's just they kind of blended in together. So this helps create um, that depth and separation from the pore painting and the decals, but while still tied together. So there you have it. I took uh, an okay pore painting and added something that now I just absolutely love it. Thank you, water slide paper. And one last thing I was going to note is it's a good idea to varnish this um, or seal it because of number one, the water slide paper has this sheen to it, this glossy effect, whereas my pore painting has more of a matte finish. So it's very distinct, you can really see uh, the difference there almost as if something's pasted on because it has a different sheen so it'll unify it if you varnish it plus the water slide paper is really delicate like it can still be scratched and it's just good to have that UV protection so that's it for now thank you guys so much for watching and I hope that you can go add on something to a pore painting that you just really love so thank you so much bye